We will not allow our children to inherit our mistakes. We will preach it, we will teach it, we will talk it, we will verbalize it, and it happens. Shall I invite us to be upstanding, please, so that we can read God's word, and uh, we continue from there. I'm reading today the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4. I want to read from verse 1, and probably I'll be closing it at verse 7. And the Bible says that a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying that your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. And so Elijah said to her, go together with me. What did he say? What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your main servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels, not gather just a few. First number four, and when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you, you and your sons, then put it in all those vessels and set aside all the full ones. First number five. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. And now it came to pass that when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And she said to her, there is not another vessel, so the whole ceased. Let's close together with verse number seven. The Bible says, go, sell the oil, and pay your debt. You and your sons live on the rest. Someone say, I shall live. I shall not suffer. I shall not die. So help me God. The Lord bless you. Please be seated in the presence of God. My brothers and sisters, I would not be qualified to share what I am going to share with you today. And the Lord not lifted me from where I was 30 years ago to where I am today. I have no fear of doubt or contradiction. The man standing right before you, 30 years ago, anybody prophesying that things would have been different would be a prophet liar. Because there was no evidence that things would change in my life. I probably struggled with almost everything you would think of in life. I was raised and grew up like a shy, poor, timid boy. And I remember very well, Ed very tender age because I understand the strain and uh, the tension of lack and poverty. I understand it very well. I struggled my academics. Went to school late. At the age of 10 is when I went to class 1. I did class 1 twice. I wasn't comprehending anything in school. I went to class 3 and did class 3 twice. Nothing was really coming forth. And almost everything around me came about late. Needless to say, that I also married late. I never got my kids early. But, as I say the other time, as I look around, even those who got married early, they still have got one wife. <laughs> <laughs> so I discovered they never go, they never had not gone too far. So I want to tell someone here who feels late, tell you, you will catch up. Because the little preacher you see today also caught up with those who went ahead of him. To the glory of God. Today I want to share with you one of my most passionate portion of scripture because I'm talking about breaking the cycle of poverty or how to break the cycle of poverty. And following my story, I'd like you to walk with me because at the end of this presentation, the Lord told me there will be a release of a supernatural anointing that's going to shift you at least to the highest level degree you can imagine. To some to 10 degrees, other to 30, other to 60, but even others, God willing, you may be lucky to get to 360 degrees to the glory of God. Someone say amen. My brothers and sisters, one of the most obstacles that stands on the way of the manifestation of the sons of God is poverty, lack, and 
destitution. Are these three, we go and deal with each one of them. They mean more or less the same in terms of divination, but my background is sociology, so I'm a sociologist in my mind. And therefore, I do understand there's a distinction between the poor, that between the poverty, lack, and destitution. Those are the three things that we shall be confronted today. These are powerful obstacles that stand on the way of the manifestation of the sons of God. Meaning that unless you have a way of dealing with this, the degree at which God wants to manifest you as a son will be limited to the extent that you defeat these three dragons. Listen, poverty, the best I know, is probably the most oppressive force of darkness. What do I mean? I mean that Satan uses poverty to rob people of their God-given sense of human dignity. I have never seen any weapon that the devil uses to rob you and me, the, 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 the human, the God nature in us. Every man and a woman was created in the image of God. And I can tell you the image of God is not impoverished. That I can tell you. Yet I don't know any force that is responsible for impoverishing the lives of people of God than poverty. I want to tell you that if you defeat poverty, you can defeat any devil on the face of the earth. Amen. And the fact that God has raised some of us and defeated this devil, it means that we have a duty. The message I'm preaching today, either it affects you directly, or it affects you because God wants to use you to shift someone's destiny away from lack, poverty, and destitution. I'm encouraged by the word of God. The word of God in Gospel of St. John chapter 10 lays bare the activities of Satan on the face of the earth. He says the thief means the devil does not come except. In other words, if you see the devil, there is no other reason why he's showing up. He's showing up for three things. Number one, to steal. Number two, to kill. Number three, to destroy. And I will tell you that the devil has used poverty, lack, and destitution to accomplish this Three satanic mandates. And we must see him. But we see a contradiction. Because Christ. Christ comes to do the opposite. He says I have come that they may have life. Say with me. I have life. And I have it in abundance. So I want to tell you that there is no way you love life in abundance. I know life in abundance. As ultimate means eternal life. But allow me to tell you that the scripture always has got double fulfillment. There is the immediate, there is the ultimate. The immediate is where you and me are right now on the face of the earth. The ultimate is where God is calling us. I know that life in abundance is about eternal life. My Bible says that they may have life. And I tell you that poverty ensures that you have got no life. And when Jesus steps in your situation... One of the things that God wants to deal with you is whatever is hindering the full expression of God's image in your life. I ultimately know that sin comes, number one, but sin manifests in many, many ways. I want you to know that the force that empowers the devil to operate on earth is sin, and then the rest are manifestations. We're going to begin to deal with the manifestation of the devil in many, many ways. Therefore, my brethren, to break the cycle of poverty, you must understand the nature and the character of poverty, lack, and destitution. You must understand for you to be able to break that cycle. When I say cycle, I, I mean mufiringo. I mean cycle. <laughs> Woo! Oh, God. We must understand the nature and the character of poverty. The character of lack and the character of destitution. Poverty operates in a vicious cycle. Meaning it will keep on moving and moving. Even if it comes, in other words, it vicious means it will not reach the end. There is no end. Vicious means there is no end. It will move and while you thought, I mean, I mean the devil is as no mercy. He should by now let you go. Yeah. Year in, year out, year in, year out. Poverty lack, destitution. But vicious cycle is meant to imply that it will never reach the end, no matter how many cycles it will make. Poverty, sociologists actually, 
divine fisher cycle of poverty as a situation. That's what sociologists do. They will divine fisher's cycle of poverty because as concept as a situation where people become impoverished for at least three generations unless there is an external intervention. That is what they divine as fisher cycle. Meaning, you are born in poverty. Found your parents in poverty. You found them in it. And you begat your children in it. And your grandchildren find you in it. The devil is a liar. I came to tell somebody today there's an anointing to break every vicious cycle of poverty. It does not matter how long it's persistent. Today, one person must bring an external intervention. Amen. And, and you know the devil has no manners. Shetani anahibu. Sometimes I even want to appeal to us sociologically. Let the children of the poor marry the children of the rich. At least that can be an external intervention. Yeah. Sababu, mama yako. Pole, sorry. That's a very slow one to go. Aliolewa, alizaliwa kwa umaskin. Akaolewa kwa umaskin. Aka kupata kwa umaskin. Na wewe ukaoleka uko kwa umaskin. Ah, ah, tell your neighbor, tell, tell your neighbor, shaigana, shaigana. Shaigana means that is enough. That is enough. Ah, 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 ah. At some point, there has to be an external intervention. Amen? There has to be what? An external intervention. Three generations. That's what we call a vicious cycle of poverty. Poverty constitutes the following, and I want to name it. Today, I'm going to expose the devil and his wings. Poverty constitutes the following. Poverty constitutes low income. There will be low income. There will be low savings. There will be low buying power. There will be low investment. There will be low rate of capital formation. And the consequently, there will be low productivity. That's the manifestation of poverty. Everything is low, 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 low pressure, low. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, my doctor will cane me. <laughs> I'm not serious. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> ah. Talk to me, church. How many laws? Number one. Please talk to me louder. Number one. Number two. Eh? Number three. Law buying power. Number four. Low investment. Number five. Low rate of capital information. Meaning, even if we give you one here and ask you to talk to your friends and raise 100,000, you can't. We tell you, we only are looking for people who can bring 100,000 on the table. You won't. You see, friends, allow me to go slow on this. You see, I remember we and just got married and you know, our case was the same I've talked about. Yeah, and Pastor Jesse is the victim of being born there and at Zaliwa, uko ni lizema na wakoalewa, uko ni mesema. Yeah. The things I'm talking about are not things that happen in Karumaindo. These things happen here in Katwanya. I talk about mateso, akaolewa kwa mateseko, saiti. <laughs> and I remember very well I remember it as if it happened yesterday that a friend of ours called us for a plot in Shokimao precisely on Katani Road meet us meet us from Katani Road and the plot was going for 90,000 an eighth 90,000 and they told us please get these ones before they go would you believe it? We never even prayed about it. It was completely impossible to imagine. Because our total income was not even 30,000 together, both of us. Yeah. And both of us were working. So please know where I know where I'm going. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Watch your for such a I know where I'm going. So I've been there, Pascal. I've been there. I fought this devil to the nail. But today, in the name that is above every other name. I have the 
as you dare endeavor from the pit of hell that you are a liar. And today we will shift destinies of people. So when we talk about law, capital formation, we could not, even if we had borrowed, there was no way, absolutely. So we never even prayed about it. It was not in an agenda, nowhere. No, we never even thought about it. Our idea was just about survival. We pay rent, we eat, and produce children. <laughs> Please help me finish this thing quickly. Now, you are to The evidence is there. We have three. <laughs> hey! This preacher man, who is going to happy with you? Who is going to happy with you? Who is happy with you? Who is going are you getting blessed? Come on, show me at the bar. Are you getting blessed? Because today I will shift the destiny of many people by the grace of God. I pray today, God, I told God today, whatever anointing necessary to shift people's destinies, if it's apostolic, pour it on me. If it's prophetic, pour it on me. If it's pastoral, pour it on me. I want it because I'm eager to see your things change. My history changed. My story changed. Yours will change as well. Amen. Yours will also change. Low productivity. In other words, even what you produce can make, cannot make end, cannot make the end meet. See, I'll show you this. I don't know, this might not be a true reflection of the current economic data, but allow me just to use it because this is what I gather from a little ahead. A survey conducted in Kenya on, on various various levels of income refute the following. This is what they revealed. It revealed that only 1% of Kenyans is wealthy, is the category wealthy people. And actually, you need to know that if your income is from 500,000 above, you are actually in the category of wealthy people in Kenya. There is nothing you cannot do. It's actually been argued that the most, they say, if you can manage to get 1 million EQ per month in Michigan, I mean, there is nothing you cannot do in this world. And there is nowhere you cannot go with that. Because you have entered in Kenya, that is, in the category of the wealthy. And they only constitute 1%. Yeah, but that's the lower limit. They start from there, going upwards. Second, showed the people we call the rich. The rich, the rich are also 1% in this country. And the rich earn between 100 to 500,000. So you see, 500,000 lies in between. You can be this side, you can also be the other side. But let me tell you this for free. They say the most difficult money to put in your hands is 100,000. If you put 100,000 in your hands with good plan, with prayer and a focus, you can put a million in your hands. Please consult your mark for more details. <laughs> All right? But I tell you for free. If you can put 100,000 kwa mkono, they say, iyo diyo ile pesa ngomu kupata kwa mkono. Is the anointing hall already? Because today I'm going to anoint people that have never handled that kind of money. Because I want to shift your destiny. If I was where you are, I would have said a big amen. I know you want to look like you are poor, but say amen. Because where you are, you are between failure and success. You are between there. And many can stay there for a long time. Those are the people that God has sent me to speak today. To shift your destiny. Say you have to start scaling up. Because if you can handle 100,000 for once. We shake it. Niyako. Niyako meshika na mkono. If you have to police. Lakini ukonayo as we talk right now. Uniambie ni meshika ni konayo. I can show you with this money. I can show you in the next five years, you can be a story to behold. Hey! Hey! Glory to God. Number three, the third category is the category we call the middle class. The middle class only constitutes 6%. I know the story is different. But these people earn between 50 and 100,000. So you realize with 100,000, you haven't actually crossed over. You need to scale a bit further ahead. But if you just trip backwards, you, you trip into the other class. But from 50,000, it tells you that 100,000 is not far. It is feasible. It is feasible. You can actually realize it. With proper planning, 
a proper organization. If you have 50,000 every month, there's a way we can help you. Tell you number one, don't get a house of 20,000. Huh? Don't rent 20,000. No. Enda nyumba yiko chini hapo. Because if you get a house of 20,000, it's going to be difficult for you to raise above that. These are mistakes we made. We will not allow our children to inherit our mistakes. We will preach it, we will teach it, we will talk it, we will verbalize it until it happens. And number three, the fourth category, is the category that I believe I'm called to. It is called the 40% it's called the working poor. They are, they are called what? Working poor. These people earn between 10 and 50,000. That tells you if you are earning 50,000, you, you are actually still in the category of the working poor unless there's an external intervention. The external intervention could be in terms of information. Please, when you hear us having programs on social media, our online family connect, and we are talking business, don't say I'm not a businessman. Don't say that's my parents. Please discover we are giving information that can catapult to the next level, can change your story. Glory to God. But you see that. Then number five, we have the people we call the poor. We have the working poor, but we have people we call the poor. There is the working poor and there is the poor. They constitute 40, a whopping 40%. The poor, they earn between five and 10,000. Look at where the bulk of the Kenya population is. Look at this. And then lastly, down there, we have the people we call the destitute. These are 10%. These people earn up to 3,000. With all their collections from day one of the month to the end of the month, the only thing that can land their hands, they can make, is up to 3,000. It is that because there are people who can make zero income. There is no income they are making at all. That's what brings that. If you add that number, it tells you that 92% of Kenyans require divine intervention. And I see how humble you look. I also, you also look, you look bitter. I need to know whether you are bitter with the information or bitter with the informer. <laughs> Me, these things, I only discovered them. I am not the author. I'm not the author of this. It is information I gleaned so that I can help to educate God's people for the glory of God. Hallelujah. It is when I discern where I am to raise from where I was a destitute earning less than 3,000. And I was a small boy in the village after high school. And I discovered again things academically didn't go straight the way I want them to go. And I remember picking up my trouser, one trouser, and my yellow shoe. And I told my mother, I've got Nairobi because I thought that Nairobi, I'll make a difference. And I stepped in this Nairobi with one, one pair of trouser, trouser and my orange, my orange shoes. It was an orange shoe. I know the day I stepped at the country bus. I, can, I know the shoe, I know the trouser, because they were mine. And also know the shoe. They were, I, I know it. And life began from that space. Completely, and I remember talking to this brother. God bless him. And I asked him to accommodate me. But before then, mm, let me edit that. I <laughs> edit that. You know my relatives are here. <laughs> I remember talking to this brother. This brother told me that is, I'll give you somewhere to sleep. I told him that's all right. Remember, this is a purely high school boy. Purely. And that's where my life began. And I woke up in the morning. Followed up some young men went to his just area, spent a whole day rolling, and came back home. And I found there was no food in the house. I've not eaten anything. This good gentleman, brother of mine, and a girlfriend, so he was eating in the house of the girlfriend. Walikuwa na pick up a moja kwa girlfriend. Lakini ujanja inasaidi yanga wakati mungiri. Sababu nilifika yo jioni kwa kwamba ile trosa na ile shati ni chafu. Na lasima yende kasi kesho. Na mimi mungaro nilianza kitambo. Eh? Mungaro? 
mungaro tuliazana na yeye kita nikaamua sina sabuni kumbe sina sabuni ya kufua nguo nikachukua nguo za huu mse chafu zote nikachukua nguo zake nikafua na kale kashati kangu nikaingiza hapo kwa hizo zake nikafua nikaingia kwa nyumba nikaingarisha masufuria ilikuwa nikaingarisha nikaisugua ilikuwa imekuwa nyeusi hapa nyuma nikaisugua kakuwa safi alipofika akaona nyumba yake safi nguo safi Haka, alikaona akaniambia ndugu umekula kitu leo nikamwambia Yesu ni bwana <laughs> Yesu ni bwana akaenda akanunua unga akaniambia pika ungali leo tukule nikapika kubwa ndio ibaki ya kesho ujaja ujaja nasaidia bwana nikapika kubwa sema hata kama mboga itakuwa <laughs> itasaidia mtumishi <laughs> eh hey, yeah And that's how the story developed. And I know it is possible to stay this Nairobi and not make 3000. I know it is true. And if you are here, please know that I'm sent to you today by God's name. Clap your hands somebody give God praise. Woo! Woo! <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. You are in the right place. You are in the right place. And so my brethren If the vicious cycle of poverty is to be broken then one generation must rise to find external intervention. Did you hear what I said? If the cycle is going to be broken because the cycle is a trap that you must notice. I realize I think we were trapped. I think I am trapped. It is that realization that it causes you to start looking for external intervention. I will not be ashamed to let you know that one of the reasons why I got saved was because I was looking for external intervention. I don't lie. I heard that the man from Judah can do something about people's luck. I heard that that was gospel news to me. I heard that God can change your story. I, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. And when I heard I believed it. When I believed it I began to live it. And I heard that if you pursue God and find him your story will change and I did it and it is changed. And I also believe yours will change too. Jesus mighty name. I say yours too. I say yours too. We will change. I only believed. And I know that someone is here and asking is there any hope for the little girl? I say yes girl. There's some not only little hope there's great hope the bible say that those who look unto the lord shall be radiant you too will shine you break the cycle the cycle you break it and you move to your next phase of life you know my preaching never comes to an end before we handle the how so how do you break the cycle of poverty number one. number one. You break the cycle of poverty remember we talked about the external intervention by invoking the anointing by invoking the anointing I personally know that there is a way the preacher man has not helped the audience what i'm presenting to you is a dosage when the doctor writes to you one times one for five days please know it is all the drugs subscribed and prescribed you listen to me it therefore means it tells you a pack is written one times one then tells you take this for five days no that if you do not take the whole dosage that the doctor's prescription is not helpful to you my doctor keep telling me even he tell me the bish how are you doing i say i'm i'm doing good he tells me please make sure you finish the dosage even if you feel better please do what finish the dosage you are sitting with the neighbors who have not finish the dosage please i want you to talk to them right now and tell them please finish the dosage for today ya leo tumia yote tumeke yote finish your dosage there's a way in which we taught people from the pulpit that the only thing they need to do is to pray i believe prayer is necessary but i believe that it is not prayer alone it is prayer plus what i'm going to share with you in invoking the anointing to invoke is to appeal to a higher authority or higher power you must discern that vicious cycle of poverty is a demonic trap 
And you can never entrap yourself just because you are educated. I've lived enough to know that there are many people with many certificates that have never helped them at all. So I've lived long enough to know that. We see the woman in 2nd Kings chapter 4 realize that her condition will keep repeating itself unless she finds external intervention. She discovers that this is a mess. I am in a mess. And unless I do something, this will keep repeating itself. And so she went to Elisha the prophet in 2nd Kings 4.1. And she cried out saying, your servant, my husband is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord and that creditor is come and take my sons to be his slaves. Depicting the lowest level of poverty anybody can be in. Here is a man who lived under strains of poverty in debt, but never recognized the need to entrap himself. He walked himself holy and pure, but poverty lavished him and left a demonic trap for the sons. I stand here today, the servant would let you know, you shall not leave a trap for your sons and daughters. Oh, come on, somebody. I say you shall not leave a trap for your sons and daughters. At the moment you go, then somebody has to come to the hay to see how will they go to school. That's a trap that all of you must escape in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, yes, I'm preaching. Listen, she said, I must do something. I get a revelation from the word of God that here is a man of God who did not know that Elisha has a solution. You, did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? Because God's people. I said here is a man of God, holy and pure who feared God. But he did not know that Elisha was a solution. And it took the woman, when the man left, the woman woke up. She said, no way. She went to the man of God. Did you know that your servant feared the Lord and you know that he is dead? I can no longer continue. I must step out of this trap. Do you know There is an anointing that can change where you are married to. And please, girls, don't get yourself happy in wedding bells. Hey. Karike. Hakuna haja. Sasha, uangalie kwa hii mzee yuko namna gani? Ni masatani gani na kukojea? Eh? Hakuna haja. Na nini vijana? Mapepo ingetu maliza mapema. Remember, I said this, I said this earlier. Please, all my young men, please take note of this. All my sons, take this, please. Hustlers don't marry early. No. Not because they don't have feelings for getting married. No. Please don't allow your feelings to determine your destiny. Yeah. There's something we call delayed fulfillment. There's a reason why hustlers don't marry Ali. When I see a hustler marrying Ali, Naskia kutafuta kiboko wilbo force ya fanye kasi. Lakini, kama miaka inasonga, na unaona pato, Kuja unione. Niseme, wanafukisha huyu, tutapabana na ye mbele, tutapamalia mbele. But you must be able to ask yourself, before I can bring someone's daughter to my house, have I fed myself? You must either have it, or you must look it. Ikuwa kwamba, either ukonayo, ama inaondekana, haiko mbali. Like the young man, you are sitting around you, ana lakini, haiko mbali. It is within the reach. Amen. That if you are still believing God for fair and your house was locked last month and you want to bring someone daughter in your house, the devil is using you. <laughs> to continue the vicious cycle of poverty. Asa de mama, ile mutokoya jela inafanya kasi. Unempikia mzuri. 
Watch the living. Time when a song like kid kulima talima. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your prayers. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> you are believing God for fair. Hata kwenda kumudhonua. Mudhonua ni kule kwa mama ya musichana. Kwenda umepewa fair wende. Do you know I know a young man who went na hakuwa na fair kurudi? So, 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 I think the devil is using you. Where were you going? Haibu dogo dogo bwana. Kijana anakana, hapuna umekaka, hapuna kijana, kijana anakuja kwako pasa, pasa kibonyo, unawana ataki gorudi? Kijana, unajua, Afrika ni ngumu kuruza mundo, when is she return back? Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a cultural thing. When you go to America, Americans don't know that one of the ways to offend an, an, an African is that when, when are you going back? When, when are you going back? I say, hey, Africa, we don't ask people when they're going back. They go back when they want. <laughs> when, are you, when are you going back? I say, oh, I'm here for a while. I never answered. I'm here for a while. I'm going to be here for a while. I never announced my return. I announced my arrival. Amen? Amen! I say amen! No, no, kijana, die, kurudi. Kumbe ni fair ana. Mumbariki na kitu tutaona niwaambia kesho na dedication narudi. Yeah. Narudi. Narudi. <laughs> the Bible says in the set of the 10 verse 27, it shall come to pass that day that his bar shall be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke shall be broken from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. There is something in the word of God in the economy of scripture called the anointing oil. The anointing oil is that divine intervention of the Holy Spirit where the Holy Spirit invoked into the process of the cycle. It's a powerful personality. That when the Holy Spirit is invoked that cycle, trust me, you break out of it. I say you break out of it. The Holy Spirit was responsible for my breaking out. I know the day. I know the hour. I know where I was seated when God told me your story has changed. The story never changed that day. But I knew something has been ignited in the supernatural. It's about to manifest on the natural. Glory to God. It's number two. Secondly, attach value to what you have. Attach value to what you have. You know, my brethren, we spend a lot of time and energy looking for what we don't have while ignoring what God has already placed at our disposal. I want to urge you today. The woman of God in verse number 2 said to Elijah, what, Elijah asked, what shall I do for you? And she tell, tell me what you have in the house. That's all that I want to know about. And she said, your maid servant has got nothing in the house but a jar of oil. She never recognized how powerful the jar of oil could have been to change the course of her history. It took the anointing to lift the little she had. So you must have something. Could be a skill. Could be a passion. Could be a talent. Could be some connection. You must have something. God never does anything to anybody without first of all recognizing what they have. You have to recognize what you have. That jar of oil could be something. That gift could be something. Some of you just your good looks. Hallelujah. This is something. Yeah. There are people who get jobs because of good looks. That you are going to look for a cleaner, but they see they say no. You you don't have no more cleaner. Yeah. You know you will be cleaning at the reception. Yes. 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 Beautiful girls like you don't sweep. Oh. Please, do, do, would you mind? Can you take a course? Say, me, yes, I can. Can you call back? Say, yes, I can. Can you type something? Yes, I can. Please, stay at the reception. When people come, smile at them and tell them, welcome to Opti then. Yes. Yeah. Please, take seriously what you have. God asked Moses, what do you have in your hands? Not what did you leave at home, what you have in your hands. Anything you have, God can use it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh. Number three, I should be coming to a close. Number three. Because I want to take, take up some time and pray for people today. 
Turn your social networks into economic streams. Turn your social networks to economic streams. You see, there's a young man I, I've loved in the church here. There's a young man who I've seen him just vend vending just a little joke. Why is that young man? Are you here? Is that young man here? Yeah? There's a young man I've seen around here who is always kudakakitu anauza. Are you here? This could be your turning point, man. If you're around, let me know. That young man, there's something that young man. There is, is he here? I asked for that time. Is that young man here today? Your story changes now and here. That's how you know God sent me to you. Are you here? If you're not here, I'm not responsible because the anointing is for now. Okay, fine. We will take care of that business much later. Whatever you have, social networks, you are in a WhatsApp group that is over 100 people and you are selling nothing. We have a business group here called Destiny Soko. Na iko na watu zaidi ya 500 na huko ndani. Sasa wewe bwana, hiyo yako tu ni emoji tu ya kuchekanga tu watu wakiongea vitu na cheka tu. Emoji yako. Ya? Ai. He? Uza kitu bwana hata kama unjua karanga uza kitu pale. Turn your social networks into streams of income. Do something about the networks you have. Network is net worth. That's what my George Washule elders taught me. Network is net worth. There is a lot of business around you. You have got so many people like you, but you have got nothing to offer. Find something you can offer. Sell something for heaven's sake. Look for something. That young man anuzanga tu njogu peke yake. Na tu vitu vitu ya kuma uma. Tu mabuyu. Juzi ni meona komba wa dikaribu ni memea mabuyu. Mabuyu. There are a lot of mabuyu. Zile. Nale kijana. Mdogo. Sana. I can tell you. If you do something about what you have. You'll be amazed by what God can do. Amen. There are people who have made. Who have moved from destitute level. To be joining the wealthy. Because of selling very useless things. Now when kidwa mengia at the juice kumetokea into a love industry at the kuchekesha watu kama hii niko nayo hii ni kipawas to me jameni hii ni pesa passengers na utupa at the love industry unaenda tu kwa mkutano ukachekeshwe tu na unalipa 2000 uingie uchekeshwe na mwanaume alidiscover yeye ako na kipawa ya kufanya watu washeke by just talking nonsense i have never had a comedian i mean I mean, making sense. Actually, if it makes sense, it's not comedy. Right? <laughs> I mean, just, just selling nonsensical things and people are willing. People are stressed. They want to hear useless things. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Some of you need power. You know, recently, some men discovered an opportunity to enter the cosmetic industry and they are giving women a run of their money. Oh, yes. So, no, say, hiyo ni awanawake, shindwa, shindwa mchana katikati, sasita. Ah, ah, siku ya leo, hakuna kitu. Hakuna kitu. And some girls are discovered, kuna wanaume wata kunyolewa na mwanamuke. Na wako na pesa. Kwanza wakinyolewa na mwanamuke, wanaacha tip. Nasema kwa unanjua hii kunyua nyua wanaume. Wewe. Wewe ni kuna. Unashida kuwa wewe. He. Kuna wanaume wataka kunyolewa na mwanamuke. Ya. Sababu. Mukono ya mwanamuke na mwanamuke tofauti. Kuna siku moja nilikuwa inanyolewa. Nikabia kilozi yangu niko naraka. We ni oshe. We. Nikuwa kama nakuwarusu wa nakuni. Sima. Fana. Fana. Balas. 
Oh Lord. <laughs> so I teach my pastors that at least enjoy your sermon. Even if nobody is enjoying it, enjoy it yourself. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 3 says, Go, go, borrow vessels from everywhere. Borrow from everywhere. Don't discriminate your borrowing. Borrow everywhere. Allow me to let you know that borrowing is in the word of God. And please, don't misinterpret the scripture in Proverbs that the borrower is a slave to the, to the lender. Please, that scripture is misused. That is wisdom for guiding. Amen. The prophet knew Proverbs. He said, go and borrow. I want you to know that one way to utilize your networks is to borrow wisely. They say, if you know how to return it, you can borrow. But if you don't know how to return it, don't borrow. I'll tell you this. I was a very young man. And Mwendo is my witness because me and Mwendo were put up a little company and we were doing supplies. And I went knocking to people's offices and I walked to the office of Tyson's. And I was given an order to supply stickers. It's an insurance. Stickers. I did not know how to produce them. I don't even know where to get them. But I went around looking. And I was given the LOPO, not, not LOP. I was given an LOPO, not LOP. <laughs> I was given LOP. Supply this amount. And honestly, I didn't have any coin. Yeah. And I went to my friend, a friend of mine. He was a best man of my big brother in the wedding. I went, he was working in the bank. I gave him the LOP. And they love you. <laughs> and I told him that I want this money. And trust me, he gave me the money. I went boss staff, printed and supplied. And I was paid in a check in the name of the little company registered, which did not even have a bank account. I'm preaching. I went back to him. I told him I've been paid, but I have no bank account. And that time, you couldn't open a bank account if you had no money. So, he guaranteed me in KCB when I opened an account at KCC of all other places. Hey. Oh, yes, Mary. Oh, don't joke, man. Hey. And I was, and the check cleared. For the first time in my life, I wrote a check and I opened the check on myself. I withdrew the money and the straight I went to the bank of that man. I returned back his money. And I ate what remained. You too can do something. I say you too can do something. So use the networks that you have. For economic streams. Use and borrow only when you know how to pay. I knew. This was not my buddy. This was not even my friend. I only went to him with an idea. There are people alive today that are willing to lift you from where you are. If they see that you can think. If they see you can be faithful. The problem we have today, many of us are not faithful. You can't be trusted with a pesa kidogo. Where you not a pesa kidogo too? Pesa kidogo too, you have to come to end. At least you can sign with your name. Yeah. Now to mandate it, dogo, 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 dogo. So we have to tell you, say, go at the borrow. So simply tell him, turn your social networks. You are about to become an oilpreneur. Hallelujah. You are about to sell oil. You're going to be an oil dealer. So go and activate your networks. Start the activation by borrowing vessels. And it don't your becky dogo. I'll tell you this. One thing that I value personally is big things. Whatever I do, I don't like small things. Yeah. Now penda. Big things. If come and shamba shamba kubwa, kanisa kubwa, watu wengi. That's what I think. Yeah. He mindset ya. He mindset ya. Ya kiosk. At bibi bukubwa. Wewe. You are messing my preaching. Oh Lord. <laughs> number four, number four. We have got to finish this on time. Number four. Number four. Retreat. Retreat. 
Think smart and work hard. Retreat. Think smart. Work hard. Retreat. Most of us, when you go to sleep, we will not come to Mulevi. When you are to you will not come to Mulevi. They say, the last five minutes before you sleep, and the first five minutes when you wake up, is the most precious time of your life. Yeah. Think. Work smart. Work hard. Retreat. Meaning, consult, evaluate. I says, why am I? Why am I not growing? Am I cast? If I'm cast, let's pastor take care of this one. After I pray for you from today, don't mention cast anywhere. It is done. Because one way of the devil keeping a piece of your cycle, ni kukuambia kwa bome rogo. Don't you mean ni rogo? Ni rogo. Don't you hear ni uchawi? Hii ni uchawi. Ah ah ah. Habana. Habana bwana. Uchawi to maliza na yao hapa leo. Tupabana na ile ingine. Amen. Amen. You have to do something about this. Verse 4, say, when you come in, say, when you come in, shut the door behind you and your sons. Shut the door behind you. We retreat. And they say, and pour into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. Maze, ungengia kwa yo nyumba huu madhe yo siku. Hey, likuwa duni kungulu kwangala. Pa, kungulu kwangala. Sababu iyo doi menja. We, weka kando. Weka, lete mutungi next. Lete yo saan. Lete yo sufuria. Kuchapa kazi. Yeah. Kama ungingia yo nyumba yo usiku. Na waliambiwa wafunge yo nyumba. Funge ni nyumba. Mujifungie ndani mchape kazi. Okay? Mujifungie. Kuku siku ni kungulu kwangala. Kungulu kwangala. Pa. Ni mitungi yo nja. Weka kando. Pa. Weka. Weka. Meaning. There is no room for lazing around. You will not break out of this cycle by lazing around. Come on. You will not. Don't just think just by just speaking in tongues, you get you out of poverty. No. You can never speak in tongues yourself out of poverty. You will have to find a way of doing something that the Bible says you do. Number five and the last one at the close here is turn your ideas into an enterprise. Turn your ideas into an enterprise. What we call Entrepreneurs are people who have turned their ideas into an enterprise. That's what makes them entrepreneurs. Look at the Bible. The Bible says in first, in first number seven, he said, and then she came and told the man of God, and the man of God told the woman, go, go, don't waste time, go, sell the oil, sell the oil, ingia kwa kasi, be a shara, pay your debt, I like that one, lip and deni, and then you and your sons live on the rest. Oh, now she had to start learning marketing one on one. Hey, mafuta. Ate mafuta. Gani? Mafuta tu yoyote ilo nataka tuniko na mafuta. Mafuta, mafuta, mafuta. Mafuta ya kume, mafuta ya ishirini. Mafuta, mafuta. Gani yako? Mafuta. Na vijana kule sokoni ni mafuta, mafuta. Money did not come running on taps. No. There was sweat into it. They went from village to village. First they had gone borrowing. But second time they are not borrowers. Second time they are business people. Second time they are entrepreneurs. I have no doubt that God wants to change your history. God bless you. Allow me to read only one scripture. Job chapter 36 and I close my business here. Job chapter 36 and Verse 11. One of the companions of Job gave him this piece of advice and was talking about the dignity, the wealth, and the wisdom of God, how he values righteousness, how he values wisdom and obedience. And he told them about God that if they obey and serve him, meaning God, say they shall spend their days in prosperity. And their years in pleasure. So if they obey, there's place in the economy of God. If you serve him to spend your days in prosperity. Say, so I will spend my days in prosperity. Meaning you break out of the cycle of poverty. First number 12, the Bible says, But if they don't obey me, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. 
my hands are clean before God today. That I've given you knowledge what it takes you to break out of poverty. Stand on your feet and God bless you. Woo! Shadabaka. Glory to God. Woo! Masaka Harianda Labazar if you sense the glory of God, this place, raise your hand. I just begin to worship Him, mighty God. I love you this morning. Woo! My God. My God. 